the HTTP protocol is a simple request response protocol whereby the client sends a for every object sends a special HTTP request message and the server honors the request by providing the requested object in a specially crafted HTTP response message. Now the interaction between the client and server within HTTP is purely stateless. Essentially the server does not maintain any information about the clients. If the client were to request for the same object the hundredth time the server will not complain hey I have already given this to you. So it's purely stateless which makes things uh, a bit limited. For instance if you consider going to an online shopping website and this is your shopping cart if you are to put an item in your cart on the first page as you move on to the next page given the fact that the server is not maintaining any state information um, you will lose the item that was placed in your cart so it, it presents itself a problem and we will look at ways in which we can deal with um, we can look at ways of introducing state over this purely stateless protocol but at this stage it's just suffice to consider that HTTP is purely stateless and while it has its limitations what it does is it gives rise to simplicity in, in the design in that the server and client don't need to maintain a history of past history of the state and if either were to crash or if the connection goes down you can easily resume the session without any problems if you have a stateful protocol then it introduces all a whole host of complexities that you have to deal with when you need to um, recover from such um, conditions so State, statelessness leads to simplicity which is again one of the um, reasons why HTTP protocol has um, stood the test of time. Within the protocol stack the HTTP is right at the top on the application layer. Now the HTTP needs to make use of a suitable transport layer protocol and at the transport layer we have a choice between UDP and TCP. So the fundamental difference between the two is that TCP provides reliability in transporting of the web objects whereas UDP offers no such guarantees and essentially if you were to use TCP to run over UDP you will have very lousy experience in that um, if you send a request for a page it's possible that the requests go missing or even some of the objects when they are being transported back from the server they go missing so the pages will not render properly so the idea is HTTP as a protocol requires reliability which is why they choose TCP um, connections so what happens is the client needs to initiate a TCP connection and generally this is done at port 80 but we can choose some other ports as well port number um, so the client sends a connection request to the server this is the TCP connection request and the server has to accept the connection request and then a TCP connection is established so once a TCP connection is in place then and only then um, the client can send HTTP requests across to the server to which the server is going to reply with the requested object now note to get a single object how much um, 
time has gone into um, this process so we can measure the amount of network traffic based on the number of round trip times that are required to service a request so to get a single object we spent one round trip time to establish a connection and another round trip time to request and receive the object so in this case this object took us two round trip times to uh, be delivered to the client so here we have the client and the server and after the TCP connection has been established the ensuing HTTP connection can either be persistent or non-persistent in nature so the difference between persistent and non-persistent connection is the number of objects that can be um, requested and um, received within that connection so here straight after the TCP connection in case of a non-persistent connection let's say the client requests for an object and straight after this server responds to this um, request the connection is going to be closed so basically in a non-persistent um, connection at most one object is sent over the TCP connection in case of um, a persistent connection you can have multiple objects being requested and received by the um, client so in case of persistent connection the connection just doesn't close there you can request for a new object and receive that object and so this continues let's look at the difference between persistent and non-persistent HTTP connections suppose we have a website um, which has an index.html um, base page and this base HTML page has um, links to five images so let's see what happens in case of non-persistent HTTP so we start off with a TCP connection request so the browser sends a request for TCP connection establishment the server accepts the connection and at this stage the TCP connection has been established and once this is done the client sends a HTTP request a GET request more specifically for the index page the server receives the request and sends back a HTTP response containing the contents of the index.html page and at this point the server closes the connection and therefore the client only has the base HTML page which is rendered on the browser so while rendering the browser will discover that there are five images that are hyperlinked and they need to be fetched so what ends up happening is that for each of these um, linked um, objects the browser will establish a different TCP connection send a HTML request for each of the images and um, receive those images so essentially in case of non persistent HTTP we will find that there are there's one round trip time to establish the TCP connection and for each object we require one round trip time to fetch that object so in this case we have one base HTML page plus 
five linked objects so therefore there are total of six objects including the base HTML page that needs to be fetched in order to render the page completely so for these six objects we will spend two round trip times each and therefore we will end up using 12 round trip times to completely render the um, to, to completely receive all the objects and render the page on the um, browser now in case of a persistent HTTP connection the server does not close the connection and the connection is kept open and therefore technically the client can request for multiple objects within the same HTTP connection so here you can say get me image number one and the server is going to provide the requested image so in case of um, persistent HTTP connection we will require one round trip time to establish the connection and for each object we will require an additional round trip time so in case in this example we have the base HTML page plus five linked objects so we have six objects therefore will require six round trip times for each of these objects plus one for the TCP connection so in this case it is seven round trip time so as you can see the persistent connection if you're receiving if you're requesting multiple objects um, from the same server a persistent connection ends up being more um, efficient in terms of reducing the number of round trip times required to fetch um, the objects.